All right, if you will, please turn to Genesis 6. Well, let's go ahead and start. Let's go ahead and start with Genesis. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and start with Genesis uh, 5:21. Now, I want you. To, we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, Enoch because I don't think we can leave where we're at without talking about uh, Enoch because of the fact that how do we start this out? It all started out with what? Going, going up in a blaze of glory. Amen. With uh, uh, Elijah going up in a, a blaze of glory. So uh, as we look at this, I think we kind of need to look at the two people that did not experience death before they went to heaven. And so we're going to spend some time. You will get a handout. And don't throw the other hand out away because it will play into it eventually. But if you uh, will look at uh, uh, Genesis 6, 21 and uh, 25. But I want to point a few things out that's going to help you with this a little bit and, and talk about a few things. Uh, do you realize that uh, just as uh, Lamech is the ungodly line of Cain was the seventh from Adam, uh, uh, so Enoch was the seventh from Adam on the Seth side of it. Cain, Abel, Seth. It's kind of amazing as you look at the bloodlines that both of them are seventh from Adam. One in the bloodline of the secular, I think the gentle way to put that would be the secular worldly. And, and we act like, you know, we've never had this problem with uh, the spiritual versus the secular or the uh, 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 worldly versus the spiritual. And, and, and we see that secular society took off big time uh, under the, uh, under the, the lineage uh, opposite of, of Seth. Seth was the godly. And, and it's amazing that what, what lineage does Jesus come from? The lineage of Seth all the way through. And you see that the lineage of Seth and the side of Seth, as we look at this and talk about Enoch, that side of things was uh, always spiritual. And, and, but as you look at uh, uh, as you look at the other bloodline that came from the killing of uh, Abel and Cain, as you look at the other bloodline, they really built a society of social uh, uh, emphasis. Now, I think it's interesting also as we read this. Now, I want you to kind of look. We're on uh, Genesis 6, well, I mean 5. And I want you to look at something that uh, uh, starts out, the descendants of Adam. And, it, and, and every one of them are going to uh, end with one thing. It's sort of like uh, as you look at, uh, it talks about the years. And it talks about how long they lived. Uh, let's go to, uh, you know, uh, as you look at... Uh, uh, the different uh, lineages, you, you go and start with uh, talking about how old everybody was, and you know, that's something that everybody looks at, and everybody is, is interested in, because how long they lived back then, you know, it's uh, uh, you look at, at how long these, these folks lived, and you know, uh, uh, Enoch, uh, look, he lived, with verse 21, Enoch lived uh, 65 years and became the father of Methuselah. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years after he became the father of Methuselah, and he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. But that's nothing compared to some of them. But every one of them, now I want you to look at this. Uh, so all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, I want you to look at how all the others end. Go down to verse 27. And we see that the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. And you go down through there, what's every one of them doing? They're dying. Are they not? How does, how does their time on earth end? They end in death. Now, uh, I think that uh, the first death that God spoke of about in the Garden of uh, Eden was Genesis uh, 2.17. And, and that was primarily spiritual. So if you look at Genesis 2.17, we're going to look at this a little bit more in detail. But if you look at Genesis 2.17, But the tree of, no, of knowledge of good and evil you shall eat, for in the day that you eat from it you will surely die. Now the death wasn't immediate, was it? It was spiritual death. 
Adam and Eve did not experience physical death upon sinning, at least not for 930 years in the case of Adam. That's something, is it not? But what was he doing? He was dying a little each day. And what was the spirit? What was what was the definition of spiritual death? Separation from God. It happened. Now the death of Methuselah, the son of the godly Enoch, uh, uh, coincides with the day of the flood. You realize that? If you go and you add it up, Methuselah's death, the day he died, is when the flood came. Uh, most scholars think that he died before the flood, just before the flood. Methuselah died at. 969 years of age. Methuselah was 187 when Lamech was born. Lamech was 182 when Noah was born. Noah was 600 when the flood came. These figures add up to 969 years. It is possible that Methuselah died in the flood, but it's more likely he died before the flood. Is that not interesting? And one of the things that struck me when I first started studying this uh, and the genealogy, do you realize that up until... Uh, Noah, most of these people would have known Adam. You realize that? As you look at the dates and the way they died and how they died, it, uh, well, you know, I don't know how they died. As you look at the dates, they would have known each other. They would have had contact probably with each other. Uh, you know, I, I just uh, could you not imagine that uh, as you see this and just before the flood come that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, Methuselah says, hey, Great, 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 great grandfather, Adam, how you doing? <laughs> and one of the things that we need to understand also is why did they live so long? The gene, our, our gene pool wasn't messed up yet. Sin had not moved. The further you get away from the garden, the, 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 the younger people start dying of sin. The harder it is on the body. Also, remember one thing. What was the uh, climate in the garden? Perfect. Perfect. Was it not perfect? Mm -hmm. And so the further you get away from the garden, what happens? Sin starts playing on our gene pool. And th people start doing things that make their life shorter. Uh, I was reading the other day, for the first time in the United States of America, do you realize that people are dying at an earlier age now? Of course, you blame it on COVID to a certain extent and other things. But as you look at this and as you talk about that, I think it's kind of cool as you look at that. So, and as we talk about this and as we look at it. Now, here is, I want to ask you all, if you could have one thing put on your tombstone, what would you have put on it? You see, we don't have a whole lot of scriptures about Enoch. Do you realize we have a lot more information probably in relevant information in the New Testament about him than we do the Old Testament? You know, we don't have... Look, look at how many verses you have as you look at, at, at Enoch and, and talk about... Uh, you know, you got 21 through, uh, what, 24? Four, that's, and that's it. But if I could have one thing put on my headstone, and y'all remember this, I think the coolest thing would be he walked with God. Would that be the coolest thing you could have on your tombstone? Would that be the highest compliment you could have? It doesn't take a whole lot of verses to say that, does it? Uh, uh, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, that doesn't leave a lot of information, and we'll go ahead. What we're going to spend a day doing is we're going to look at the three separate uh, groups of Scripture that are about Enoch and, and talk about Enoch. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to hand these out to you. There's seven of them, so how many do we have here? Betty and some of y'all may have to share. Like Betty and Cora and uh, maybe uh, Carla and Nathan. And don't pay any attention to the spelling or the punctuation. Now, I started this out, if you look at this, uh, I start this out with uh, a man was complaining to his friend, Mark Twain, about how bad life was and how uh, uh, desperate a predicament the world was in. 
And he said, I'm afraid the world is coming to an end, to which Mark Twain replied, don't worry about it, nobody makes it out alive anyway. <laughs> and that's true except for two people, is it not? And I think, yeah. I think we owe it a little bit to study how these two people manage what they manage, how these two people manage to uh, not experience death. You know, if you read Paul's writings, one of the things that Paul is scared to death of is he didn't want to die. He wanted the Lord to wrap the rapture to come before he died. And, and I think, you know, uh, a lot of us are kind of that way. Now, if you look underneath, uh, 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 I, I put bless, that'll bless, that'll bless your heart. A rather cynical response, but very accurate. Nonetheless, last I checked, death is one of the few certainties of life. It is unavoidable, mostly. That's a lesson early humans slowly learn. And, and you stop and think about the animals. I think humans are the only ones that know they're going to die and can make arrangements for it. And I'm not talking about physical arrangements. It's nice when you can arrange your funeral. It makes it easier on the family. But I'm talking about we make reservations for heaven. We can make reservations for heaven. So, Death comes as a consequence of sin and disobedience. Amen? And the further we get away from the garden, what happens? The more polluted it is. And, and I started to tell you another thing that made the, the garden completely perfect and why the people live so long as they uh, move slowly away from the garden is when, we don't see rain until Noah's flood. You know, Rain does, did not come. What happens with rain? Rain is full of whatever the atmosphere has, right? Uh, you know, you can, uh, uh, if you've got uh, uh, certain uh, pollutants, they're carried by rain and clouds sometimes. Why? Because they evaporate, then they're delivered, and so that kind of spreads it around. Uh, plus, uh, people start to move out and, 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 and populations start to grow. What happens when populations start to grow and are centralized? You start having sickness. Do you not? Okay, God warned Adam and Eve of this back in Genesis 2, 16 and 17. We looked at it just a minute ago. When he said, From any tree of the garden you may freely eat, but from the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for on the day that you eat from it you will surely die. And I give you the scripture right here. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely. But from the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you shall eat from it, you shall surely die. God did not simply say, don't eat. He told them what would happen if they did. Death would come. Death came uh, on one level. It came immediately. The eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew shame and guilt. Um, it caused them to hide from God. Now, can you imagine, just imagine for a second, you're used to, in the cool of the evening, God, you know, in the garden, God comes and he visits with you and you fellowship with him, and then all of a sudden, one day, your eyes are open and you're hiding. You're hiding from the very God that you used to fellowship from. And what was it? One simple step. You do one thing you're not supposed to do. But, folks, realize one thing. Sin has consequences. Some sins' consequences are greater than others. Amen? Uh, you know, who would think that eating an apple, well, I'm going to say an apple, it's a fruit. Who would think that eating a fruit would send you, you know, have that kind of effect on you? But you look at Moses. I mean, who would think, after all Moses did, simply hitting the rock would keep you out of the promised land? And you know, other, other things that happen, just one act, of disobedience. You know, uh, we're forgiven time after time after time, but God has his lines, and God has his things you're not just supposed to step over. You know, uh, how, how big a chance did he give Sodom and Gomorrah before he destroyed them? You know, uh, and uh, as you read different things, you see sometimes it's just that last small step that a person steps over that brings about the consequences. And sometimes it seems like it would be relatively inconsequential. Let me ask you, how many of you all think murder's worse than hitting a rock with your staff? But you know what? But here's the thing I want you to remember. Sin is sin in the eyes of God. Is it worse to steal 
a dollar candy bar, or $10,000. Stealing, stealing, is it not? Sin is sin. And so we see the result of sin is death. And I think any time we talk about uh, Elijah and we talk about Enoch, we have to understand death is the subject here. Death is the thing. You know, death looms on the horizon for all of us. Some closer than others. The big consequence was their relationship with God was broken beyond their ability to repair it. As a result, in Genesis 3, uh, 22, God sent them away from his presence. Wow. Wow, what a consequence. Amen? When humans... Okay, now, uh, death of the Spirit was swift, certain, but physical death did not seem to be in such a hurry. I've heard it said all my life. A hero dies but once. A coward dies a thousand deaths. You know? Uh, which is worse, to have your physical body murdered or your reputation murdered? Pardon? Well, you have to live with a ruined reputation, do you not? Do you not? And we're pretty cruel on reputations. You know, we are talking about school earlier. And one of the things that, 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 that uh, happens in school is sometimes kids get pigeonholed. And it's hard to get out of that pigeonhole. You know, and, and sometimes we think in education that if you got a square peg, then you have to round it off to fit it in a round hole. And, and, and you know, that's understandable when you deal with a lot of kids. But we also pigeonhole each other. Somebody makes a bad impression with somebody that counts. We had a girl in our high school that uh, went out with a boy, and he spread some lies about what happened when they went out when we were in high school, and she lost her reputation. She didn't do anything. After she killed herself, the boy admitted she didn't do anything on that date. Spiritual death, physical death. When humans came out of the Garden of Eden some 10,000 years ago, they brought three things with them. Civilization, sin, and salvation. You realize that? Okay. From Adam to the flood, 4,000 B.C., in Genesis 4 5, through 5, 4, chapters 4 through 5, we have the spread of civilization. As the Bible and the archaeologists point to the uh, domestication of livestock, the development of music, and the invention of tools. That comes from the uh, ungodly bloodline. The second thing we see is a spread of sin. In this civilization, man is anything but civilized. Not long out of the garden... Cain spills the blood of Abel. Amen? Mm -hmm. And God traces the line of evil through the descendants. Once one thing happened. What happened? How does death come upon? God did not pluck anybody off. God did not make, have them die of natural causes. How did they die? The first death occurred of what? Murder. Did it not? Yeah. Man's sin. After being separated from God, we have no compass. And so you see civilization come from one branch, and you see spiritual, uh, uh, the spiritual side come from the other. What was the big thing about, <clears throat> about domestication of stock, livestock? You could cultivate. You could raise, and feed, you could raise animals, and, and, and you had a source of food. All of those things you had. You didn't have to go out and hunt them. And you, you raised them. I don't know about you, but I feel a lot better if I uh, have a big old fat steer sitting in my backyard than having to worry about if I'm going to be able to kill a buffalo mm -hmm. and find him out on the prairie. Plus, what did it do? It kept you localized. And what did it do? It built the family unit. When the family unit's not moving around, they can be localized. Can't they not? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the second thing we see is the spread of sin. Once again, civilization. Cain spills the blood of Abel, and God traces the line of evil through his descendants. Uh, it uh, accumulates and grows fast in Lemek, who murdered a young man for hunting him and then boasts to his wife that he had was seven times as evil as Cain. This, it didn't take long to get real bad, did it not? Y'all stop and think how many generations from... 
Adam to Noah. That's not a whole lot of generations for God to say what? I think the saddest thing in the Old Testament to me is when God says, I'm sorry I made man. Is that not sad? Uh, the spread of sin. Uh, the evil spread onward through the uh, centuries and finally brought about the judgment of God in the flood in Genesis 6. Okay, number two. But thank God this period also revealed the spread of salvation. Cain is not the only character and his line is not the only line. Amen? Do you realize, folks, that even today in the Middle East, we see the battle over these two bloodlines? Israel? Amen? And those around Israel. Adam and Eve had another son, Seth. In chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through 22, he's more noble, more godly line is pictured. With him came true worship as humans called to the name of, out to the name, called on the name of God. And I want you to look. I give you Genesis 4, uh, 426. I think the everything comes to a head and everything is summed up in Genesis 4, 26. And to Seth, to him also a son was born, and he called his name Enosh. Which then, uh, then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. What do you see? One person busy, doing things their own way, cultivating things, getting the civilization according to human standards. And on the other side, what do you see? That bloodline calling on God. And the two are going to war. Is that not even what happens within us? Does that not happen within us too? Do we not have a war going on in us? Uh, you know, I, I give that illustration a lot, and I learned it early. You got a, 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 a white dog and a black dog, and they're both fighting in you. One good, one evil. And I gave it a long time, said for a long time we have that, and then all of a sudden I ran across an illustration of an old, old-timey black preacher. And somebody asked him, they said, how do you know who's winning? He says, the one you feed the most. Is that not true? The one you feed the most? If you're going to feed on the Word of God and you're going to be spiritual, you're feeding that a lot more. And you're not near as worried about some of the things that are happening. You're not, real, you're not as worried about being popular. You're not as worried everybody liking you. You're not become such a people pleaser. How do you quit being a people pleaser? Every one of us, I don't care who you are, want to be a people pleaser to a certain extent. All of us do. Nobody wants people to not like them. You know, what is one of the most important things about school we've been talking about just before while everybody was sitting around the table? What we're talking about, what's changed in school? The thing that's changed in school over the last year is socialization. What happens when you keep kids out of school? They're not socialized. What happens when you have to hide behind a mask? You don't interact. What happens when you have to stay six feet from people? Folks, I'm afraid that the cure is much worse than the disease in a lot of cases. So how depends on how you socialize. How, how do you socialize? We learn to socialize as Christians through our church. We learn how to feed the good, how to feed the spiritual through the church. The secular folks, on the other hand, Learn how to feed their ego through everything that's bad. What is it? This, the one that dies with the most toys wins. Yeah, it's okay, Cora. The one with, the, with, with uh, the, the most possessions wins. The one that's the most popular wins. And so you see these two civilizations coming along, and they're, they're completely opposite of each other. Their priorities are different. Their uh, 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 worship is different. You got one out there worshiping snakes, sticks, and stones. What do you got the other one worshiping? The one true living God. Okay, so I think that, I just love that. And to Seth, to him also, a son was born, and they called his name Enosh, 
which then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. From him came Noah, Abraham, the patriarchs, David, and eventually Jesus, the Son of God. Is that not amazing? Is that not amazing? From one who, who went against God right out of the garden. And one who stayed with God and died. I think if you were to look at this and you were to see uh, uh, Cain and Abel, I think sometimes when a person dies for God, their death counts. Not only does our life count, but our death counts. Does it not? Why was one brother murdered and the other one not? One, because he was jealous and worldly, and the other one, because he did what God told him to do. What kind of impression would that make on his kids, on the next generation? <laughs> Have you noticed not many people name their, kid, kid, their kids uh, uh, Cain? Not many people name their kids Benedict Arnold? Next kid Betty and I have is going to be Judas. <laughs> that woke her up over there in that corner. From him came Noah, Abraham, the patriarchs, David, and eventually Jesus, the Son of Man. The names of his descendants are given the number of years on earth. It's told, and then the sledgehammer statement is made. Each one, and he died. And suddenly, in verses 21 through 24, the monotony is broken. You know, you sit here and you get into this routine. You ever get into a routine reading? You just kind of get where you're absorbing things and, and everything's kind of routine and he died and he died. Oh, he walked with God. Oh, boy. <laughs> Enoch lived 65 years and became the father of Methuselah. And Enoch, or Enoch, Enoch, Enoch walked with God 300 years and after he became the father of Methuselah, he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. The contribution of the line of Cain was progressive or worldly. Amen? On the other hand, those of the line of Seth was holiness. Cain's descendants built cities. Seth's built character. The end result of Cain was Lemek, the murderer. What kind of pride do you have in your heritage when you say that I'm seven times more evil than my, my uh, forefathers? You see, the thing of it is, is values are passed. Not from a bloodline, necessarily, but from the family. Who hands down? You know, Cherry said that the family unit is being destroyed, and it is pretty well. What happens if, if the anarchists and those people that are, are for the government more than they're for anything else? Because is that not what happens whenever you uh, start to have communism, Marxism, Marxism? What is it? It's about worshiping the government. Is it not? And they're for destroying the family unit mm -hmm. also. And taking the place of the family unit. School. Yeah. What what was it Marcus Marxism? Marcus, Marcus. Was it was not that it says, Give me your children for two years or however long and I will change society. And that's what they're trying to do now. Mm -hmm. They've accomplished one thing, taking the uh, Bible out of the in prayer. In sure. medicine we still pray. I mean, in some classes, yes. Oh, really? Well, I'm just saying, in some classes, you still pray, and that's good. You know, yeah. it takes a brave preacher, to, to, a preacher, a teacher, I to do that. School. Do they still well, pray? Well, they have a moment of silence. silence. Pardon? They have a moment of silence, but they pray at the games and special things like that. But I think because we're in the Bible Belt, we're kind of insulated. You know, insulated but then yeah. it takes one person to complain to the right person. Mm -hmm. and then it's like, well, and, and, and is it not amazing you've got thousands of people at a ball game that used to pray the Lord's model prayer? But all it took was one person crying for the school board to shut it down. And I've been in some discussions with some of the smaller schools when I was uh, when I first came to Texas, and uh, I was in uh, 
a, a, a church that was the largest larger church in the community in a small community because I like to be in a, 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 a big frog in a small pond instead of a big frog in a large pond with other big frogs. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that they would all would say a lot of times is, okay, we can do this until one person complains. We can get away with this, but if one person complains, and then what do you do? You have somebody come out of the Metroplex, and they're not a part of that community, haven't been a part of that community, or they hear about it in the Metroplex, and they send somebody to complain. And what does it do? It wipes it out, because we go back to what? We are becoming a secular society. We're more worried about offending somebody than we are pleasing God. Okay, now the end of Seth, uh, uh, the end result of Seth was Enoch, the man of God. The amazing thing about Enoch here is that the Bible does not say he died. It simply says he was no more because God took him away. Now, we are given information in two different places in the New Testament. You don't find a lot of information on him right in Genesis. Where do you find most of your information? You're going to find just kind of a footnotes, kind of. Just a kind of a mention in Hebrews and the book of Jude. Okay? The New Testament shines a great deal of light on the few lines of Scripture we have from the Old Testament. Hebrews 11.5 By faith Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God took him up. For he obtained the witness that before his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. Now that says a whole lot more than this other does, doesn't it? Does it not? Enoch walked with God, went to be with God, and he also witnessed for God. Now that's important. We don't stop with Hebrews. We go on to Jude and talk about this one incident. He didn't die out of all of the Old Testament beginnings in Genesis... We see in Jude what it says about, uh, about those also, O oh, Enoch, in the seventh generation. Once again, I mentioned that seven, seven, right? Mm -hmm. Seven for uh, secular, seventh uh, generation, or seventh uh, in line for uh, uh, godliness. Behold, the Lord came with many thousands of his holy ones to execute upon all and to convict all the ungodly of their ungodly deeds which they had gone in an ungodly way, and all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Wow. That's a pretty big witness, isn't it? What's it say? And about these things also, Enoch in the seventh generation from Abraham prophesied, saying. Now that's not coming from another Bible. That's not coming from here. That's not coming from. Where's that coming from? It's coming from the Word of God in the New Testament. Is it not? You know, some people say, you know, and if I saw that, I'll be honest with you. If I saw that straight out by itself, I didn't say, okay, what, Catholic, what part of the Catholic Bible did you get that from? Where'd you pick that up from? But it's not. It is Jude. Uh, who's got their, uh, 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 their uh, study Bible? Yeah. Do you have it? Yeah. Uh, are you there, Cherry? What's it say? Cherry's Chir going to read. I want everybody to listen to what Jeremiah has to say. I don't know what he says about it. He may completely contradict me. I'm taking a chance. Uh, well, 3 through 31 says the refrain, and then he died as used throughout this chapter until Enoch. He did not die. He walked with God right out of his earthly home and into his heavenly home. Slow down. In 21 <laughs> through 24, Enoch was an ordinary man who did one extraordinary thing. He walked faithfully with God, the first person of whom this is said, and one of only several men whom the Bible describes in this way. Enoch was so close to God that God took Enoch into his confidence and gave him information about the coming judgment. Hebrews 11, 5 and Jude 14. See? Isn't that kind of cool? Isn't that kind of cool? Okay, now, uh, is that in... Uh, that's all it says. Okay, did, and that's in uh, Genesis. Turn over to uh, Jude and see what he says about it in Jude. One, <laughs> one, four, one, one, four, one, one, four. One, yeah. yeah. Of course, you don't have to no, go... 20. If you go to Jude, Jude 2, 14, you've gone too far because it's not there... And I think Betty's just got her regular Bible, don't you, Betty? You don't have your Jeremiah. I have so much stuff in Don't worry about it. You got what? Yeah, I well, you know what? Don't worry about it. It's my filing system. Okay. Works for every song. Uh, Enoch lived before the flood and was taken to heaven without seeing death. 
And the false teachers claimed that God would not condemn anyone. Jude quotes a prophecy from Enoch found in a non-biblical text of that era to drive home the biblical truth that the Lord would one day return to God to judge the ungodly acts and words that have been spoken against him. Although God is a God of love, his holiness will not allow him to ignore sin. Also, I think, and I said this from the beginning, I think it's important to restate this is uh, here in this time and place. Um, what do both of these men represent? Elijah and Enoch. The rapture. Amen. He didn't know when and he didn't know how, but he knew his God would come in judgment against the wicked world. Now let's put these three passages together and we'll do that next time. So we will put these three passages together next time and we'll continue there. Okay, Tim, you can turn them off.